Hi, and in this video we're going to look at one of the demo tracks I wrote for Percussion Untamed, which is called Another Town, Another Story. And it's basically, I wanted to show you this because the way Percussion Untamed is built with all of these loops built in, is it's, it's great for just kicking off an idea. I found the loop first, I went through all of the loops and, and, and picked out loads that I liked. And then this one specifically spurred off this whole idea, kind of like the rhythmical sort of idea behind it. So there's some other stuff in here I want to show you as well, like how I recorded the live guitar and how I reamped it and what I did uh, to get that sound uh, but let's first of all just take a look through the whole track first uh, and then we'll go from there. So as you can hear, it's quite like a, a, a rhythmical track, like the foundation of it comes from just like this percussion loop that I found within Percussion Untamed. And then like the cello and the bass are there to complement it. And they just kind of like just keep on driving the whole time. Like the cello and the bass are just playing the same thing throughout the whole track. Uh, the loops get progressively a bit more interesting and a bit more technical as the track goes along. But essentially that's the, like the, the, the foundation of the track. Then there's this violin and viola, which is kind of like this, these soaring melody lines over the top. And then the last thing that I added was this electric guitar, just as a, like a textural layer, textural element, uh, just to complement the rest of the track. And what I've learned from this is that it's kind of like I'm all, I'm used to writing and, and creating space like in, in terms of frequency but not in terms of rhythm so like you know typically yes you'd have your bass at the bottom and treble at the top and then your mid-range instruments in the middle and you're kind of like used to, to you know sculpting out those places in the track but this has taught me to like actually you can sculpt out with rhythm as well so like the you know the cello and the bass and the percussion are all doing this rhythm rhythmical thing but aren't that interesting melodic whereas the violin and viola are really uninteresting rhythmically but are really interesting melodically and that's how they're carving out their own space by using rhythm to, to make you know room for each other so that's one thing I've, I've kind of been highlighted to me from writing this track so if we look at the cello first it's using uh, uh, cello untamed the, just the pizzicato uh, uh, articulation uh, and it's really percussive on its own like you know I was digging into the to the samples that's just playing the same rhythm over again I played the whole thing in from start to finish it's not a copy and paste job just so like every single like bar has its own like human feeling uh, I'll talk about microphones and everything later but that's the the cello part the bass again is using the uh, cello uh, bass untamed and the pizzicato again And again, just playing that same rhythm throughout the whole thing. I played it all in on the keyboard, but just everything is exactly the same, just so you've got that driving rhythm throughout the whole track. And I really love this. This is becoming one of my favourite sort of instruments is the pizzicato on the bass, just because you can hear like the little rasps and little rattles of the fingerboard and the strings. And that's not a bad bassist, like Sam, the bassist for uh, Bass Untamed, is a, you know, excellent, excellent uh, musician. 
but we were getting him to leave some of those rattles in and kind of like, you know, just relax a little bit into the samples and not try and make everything perfect. Uh, and I think in tracks like these where you've got like just simple, uh, simple instruments to play with, it kind of like, it just really helps to, to bring the track alive. So that's the bass. Uh, the viola next. Let's just pull open the viola. And this definitely, I mean, like the, the bass is probably the only instrument along with the violin where you could probably just play those on their own. The the the, the cello is probably going to be two or three cellists to, to pull off that line. And the same with the viola as well. I think there's four uh, notes playing at one time. So it's probably going to be four violas by the, uh, the time you get to the end of it. So as you can hear like the, the melody there is just building and rising and building and adding more notes as well. So it's becoming more and more interesting. And I was using this improvisation C1 on viola and tamed. Uh, and that one, the, the, the C1 and C2 on the viola and the violin, they've got a bit more of like a fluctuating pitch to them. Uh, so it's quite interesting uh, to, to just let the notes ring out a little bit longer so you can just hear that sort of like undulation of pitch. It's a really nice articulation to use. And then the violin's just a bit more of a simple line, but it does add uh, a bit more of a, you know, a counter melody to it. So if I just play all the strings on their own so you can hear what they all sound like together. Really nice, really pleased with how that's come out. And then the percussion, which is, is like the whole foundation, this is where the tracks come from. It's the four four loops and then it's set nine and then I've used all four of the loops uh, to just sort of like add more and more texture and more and more interest as the track goes along. And I haven't touched these like, you know, you, you can go in and change the, the notes that are used and the pitch of all those kind of things. But as it came out of the box, I was just like, that is, you know, that is really great. I'm happy with how that sounds. And that's the kind of that's the kind of line I, I would have never have written in a million years because that doesn't necessarily sound like the way I'd write percussion. And that's what I'm finding these loops are really useful for is just like, you know, providing you with a different idea and a different like it's like a writing partner, really a writing partner, really. It's like, OK, can you just come up with an idea for me? I've got this idea of a track or I need a bit of a kickstart on this track. Uh, can you just come up with, you know, this idea for me? Uh, and it's really cool. I think loop four out of this set is really nice because there's kind of like this push and pull thing with the loop where it's kind of like there's quite a lot going on and then it just relaxes for a bar and then it goes in again for the next bar and then the final bar of the loop just relaxes again. So if you listen to this. really cool how it's just sort of like you know quite fast and rhythmical and then it slides and just relaxes a little bit and then goes back in again and again I, that's the kind of thing I would have never have thought to write so it's just really interesting to have these loops and just to give you ideas and even if you just sort of like well I like that loop I'm just what I'm going to do is just take the you know the first chunk of it and use that or use the second chunk of it and create your own loops you don't have to use the loops exactly like I've done and just you know not do anything with them if you just like a little element, just go in, copy and paste, and then, you know, it's your own brand new loop. So onto the guitar next, which is kind of like the last thing that I added as this just sort of like texture, of, you know, to create just a bit more of a backing track for the whole, whole sound of it. 
And, you know, I'm not a great guitarist, but I can hold my own. I own lots of guitars. I own more guitars than pianos, but I'm, you know, I'm a pianist and not a guitarist. Go figure. But what I did was basically just plug the guitar straight into uh, DI. You know, I can, I've got an amp here and, you know, if the guitar's a bit more of like a, a feature of the track, then yeah, I'll give it a bit more TLC and kind of like dial in a bit more of a tone. But for this thing where it's just going to be swamped in plugins and effects and those kind of things, just, you know, DI straight into the interface and, and go from there, get a nice clean signal, you know, and then do what you want to do afterwards. You can obviously, you know, some people choose to bake in those sounds and like if they've got a really specific sound in their head, you know, to, to do the do the guitar chain first and then record that. Whereas I'm quite a fan of just getting the dry signal first, really dry, as dry as you can, and then sort of like either reamping it or like processing it in the box. So this is the what you know what just what the dry signal sounds like uh, in the Logic session. So nothing crazy going on there at all. It's just basically like three simple notes, just going through the whole track and I just played that all in, uh, you know, two or three takes and I, I got it roughly in time. And then that was good enough. Uh, and then basically what I did was use the uh, radial uh, reamp box, to come out the interface, back in again. And the, the I mean, this is a lesson for a, another day, but basically using the Logic's in out plugin on the other doors you'll have the same kind of thing where you're using a plugin to take the audio information out of your box into a reamp box which i'll use through whatever you want your guitar amp or like guitar pedals or those kind of things and then back in again to re-record it so this is the re-recorded sound and this is using the fairfield circuitry shallow water pedal which is kind of like an insanely expensive pedal and it but it does one thing really really well and that's just to kind of like modulate the pitch and the the, the sound of the uh, the signal that it's being fed just like like there's nothing else that really does this the way that this does it uh, and I've used it really subtly here. It's just to sort of like just create a bit more of like a ebb and flow to the signal. You can go crazy with this pedal, but I've just chosen to use it subtly here. So this is what the reamped uh, sound sounds like. Let's just turn off. Yeah, I've got all the other plugins turned off. As you can hear, it's just like fluctuating the pitch every now and again, just creating this, it's just like a, just a bit more of an interesting sound and something that just sounds a bit more, uh, just just a bit more messed up, which is my kind of style. And then I've just added a, you know, a, a load of plugins here. I've got like a cab simulator, a slight bit of uh, gain. I've got LA-2A style compressor on there just to like make it a bit more punchy and a bit more flat. Uh, EQ on there just to bring it into the right sort of spectrum. So if I just turn those three on to begin with. So it's just making it a bit more thinner and there's a bit of distortion added there as well. Uh, then I've got the uh, effect rack plugged in and this is where it starts to become a lot more interesting. Uh, this is uh, ambient echoes. It's just one of the one of the presets and I've changed the uh, the timing of it just to make it a bit more interesting. Let's hear what that sounds like on top. So as you can hear, it's starting to sound a bit more ambient and a bit more distant. And then I've gone to town on the reverb, and this is a massive reverb. Uh, Eternity, it's called, within uh, Pro R, Fab Filter, 20 second reverb tail, but I've used it really, really low in the mix. So it's only about, uh, what, what are we on? 15%. And then I've added a pull tech style EQ and I've done the push pull thing with this. And if you don't know about pull tech EQs, they do this really good thing where if you boost and attenuate the same frequency, it just it adds this sort of like sound. And what I think it does is control signals quite well. I mean, these sort of plugins, especially the UAD ones, even if you just turn them on and don't, you know, don't mess with anything, they sort of like just 
bring this magic that you're you're going where's this come from but you know they do sound really really good uh, so this is what the whole plug-in chain sounds like So it's made my quite boring, dry, not very uh, well played guitar signal. Just into something a bit more special and a bit more like, a bit more professional, I hope anyway. So this is what the whole track sounds like with that uh, in as well. So it's just like this bed that's sitting underneath the whole track just to provide like a, just an extra texture really. So that's the that's all of the elements in there and I mean in terms of mixing there's nothing too crazy going on. I've got some EQ just to pull uh, things into you know the right sort of shape uh, and then on the cello and the bass I've added a a compressor. I find this really useful especially with uh, like the shorter percussive articulations is to add some sort of compression just to bring out the dyna you know control the dynamics but bring out some more of the the sort of like the lower sound in the mix uh, so that's what I've used I mean I've I'm using UAD here again but the built-in uh, sort of like LA2A style compressors in Logic are really good as well and then on the in terms of reverb I'm really liking this one at the moment. I'm usually a big fan of like the concert hall Vienna sound, which is like this big hall, sort of like nice glossy reverb sound. But for smaller compositions like this, where there's only two or three instruments playing, I'm using this rich chamber preset, which is only just less than a second reverb tail. I'll, I'll solo the reverb so you can hear what it sounds like. So it's just like quite a small sort of sound, but it's quite lively as well. There's quite a lot of like reflections and things going on. So I'm a big fan of that at the moment, that rich chamber. You'll see that pop up a few times, I'm sure. And then on the master, I'm just doing some subtle moves just to make things sit properly. I'm using this J37 uh, tape emulator from Waves. This again is one of those plugins where if you just turn it on, and don't do anything, there's still sort of like an extra element that it's adding. I'm adding quite a lot of noise to the signal. You'll see on the on the master there, there's just a little bit of noise creeping in the whole time, which I'm a big fan of uh, with that. And then there's a compressor. Again, not doing a lot. There's only a few decibels of, of gain reduction happening there and not a lot of ratio either. Like I kind of keep it under two to one for the master. I think, again, like master bus compression should be this sort of like this extra element. It shouldn't be fixing anything. If you're having to control dynamics too much at the end, like, you know, you should be telling yourself there's something happening further down the chain that I need to control. Uh, I'm doing the same sort of push-pull thing on the... Uh, pull tech EQ. Let me just play this back to back to back. There's just something that it does. I've no idea how it's doing it, but there's something about that plugin which just like adds this thing. Even if you just turn it on and don't move a dial, it still sounds good. And then there's just a final limiter as well, which is obviously just controlling the peaks, making sure nothing crazy is going on and bringing everything up to speed. So that's it uh, for everything that I wanted to show you. If there's if there's more, like obviously just drop us a line in the comments and I'll and I'll respond to you. Uh, but one of the the point of this was that like percussion untamed is is becoming for me like an instrument where you load it up and you load a you know load a couple of loops up and it's spinning you off in a direction that you wouldn't have done before. I would have never have written this without listening to those loops first. You know the rhythmical idea came first and then the lyrical and the melodic element came second. 
And normally like I'm about chords first. I'm about like, let's create some kind of chord structure or let's create like a melody first and then I'll attach a rhythm to it. Whereas this was exactly the opposite way around. I came up or I didn't come up with the rhythm. I found a rhythm that really inspired me and then the track came afterwards. So that's kind of like the point of this video is just to show you that, you know, I, I, I've ch changed my writing style because of this uh, because of this instrument. So that's it. If there's anything more you want to know, give us a drop in the comments. Uh, but apart from that, hope you're all well and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.